Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Jennifer Brennan, and I've had the, um, the Zoom up as I was getting everything set up to make sure that when I'm working on the plants, doing the hands-on on how to repot, how to divide, and how to get these orchids to rebloom, you'll all be able to see my hands at work. Um, at the beginning, and before everyone gets signed on, we have four minutes to go. I'm Jennifer Brennan. I gotta straighten up here. And i um, got to turn my radio off. You know, be careful what you wish for in life. My dad was a safety engineer for a natural gas pipeline company, and he always carried a walkie-talkie. And so I have three younger sisters, and the four of us always wanted a walkie-talkie. And back then, because I am not a young thing, back then, walkie-talkies were really expensive. And Daddy was always getting calls because of um, the, the safety of the pipelines, and we always wanted walkie-talkies. So we got a couple of toy ones, but if you walked from the dining room into the bedroom, you couldn't hear each other. But, um, you know, so I always wish for that. That's why I say be careful what you wish for. Uh, now at work here at LA, I don't go anywhere without a radio. So, and it's off right now. So, so, so be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. Um, let me see. We are three minutes away and I'm seeing, let me just check here to see how many people have logged on. 27 people. Guess what, everybody? We had 180 people register for this um, webinar, which is incredible. And it shows me and it shows our team just how um, necessary this information is and how people are just totally baffled by how to um, work with orchids. So um, now the way it, it's happening is that um, the, uh, the registration to get to the Zoom, the link for um, the handout, and it's a two page handout. And then also um, the link for um, the products that I'm gonna be working with is in that email. But you have to click on each link separately. There was a little confusion about that. But, um, but what I'm gonna do, and let me see, I've got two more minutes. What I'm gonna do is do just a quick um, PowerPoint overview just to kind of give you the land, the, the land. Then I'm going to shove my camera back so that you can see um, and you know what I'm going to be working on. And you know a good example of why you would need to repot this one are the roots that are coming out of the of the pot. And um, you need to have if you don't. I wouldn't say do this along with me. I would say watch this one, and then you can always go back to the chalet. YouTube channel. You just go to YouTube and then type in chalet webinars and all the webinars will come up. You can watch them after the fact and then kind of work through with them with them then. Um, you, tools you'll need, good pair of pruning shears um, and um, you know and then we're going to use the the fur bark mix and I always, let me see, a minute away, I'm, I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off because people will think they're missing something. So welcome, welcome everybody. Um, we've got 46 people signed on. Um, if you have questions and answers, please use the Q&A column to type in your questions and answers. They, that works so much easier for me than having the chat box and the questions and answers. And what I'll do is at the end of this, I'll, I'll go through and, and answer everybody's answer anybody's questions. I'm, I'm tempted to look at the one that's there already, but um, I, I, I think I know better, but I'm gonna do it. Okay, here we go. Will this session be recorded? This is from Catherine Pratt. Yes, it will be. And and it will be on the Chalet YouTube channel. Okay? So that was a good question. That was a good question. Okay, so answered live and done. All right. I'll keep an eye on them. And um, when I break from the PowerPoint, uh, let me see. It is noon now. So now is my official welcome. Welcome, everybody, to the Chalet webinar. This is our virtual learning series. And this was a um, uh, a lecture that the idea was put together just last week. We were getting so many questions about how to take care of the orchids and we're having this phenomenal orchid sale right now and we have the most beautiful Phalaenopsis orchids, not just the white ones, 
tons and tons of beautiful colored ones. And they are 20% off through the weekend. We were calling it the Orchid Fair. And in honor of the Orchid Fair, um, our marketing team asked me if I could put together a presentation on how to repot, because that seems to be a mystery. And it's one of those mandatory things that you should do for your orchids every one to two years. And then also people wanna know how to uh, divide. And this is a good example of one of my own plants. And this is this is one of the uncidiums. And look how it's packed. You can't see me. It's packed in this pot. And see how the leaves are wrinkled? That's because it's so crowded in this pot and um, it's getting dry, too dry in between waterings. And so that's one of the signs that it's time to repot it or, and divide it. I'm gonna redivide this one. I'm gonna repot another one. And then I'm gonna show you how to um, prune back finished blooms or bloom spikes, and also to help in what you should be doing to get the um, your orchids to rebloom. And that's all gonna fit in this one hour presentation. So let me see, we've got 78 people. Oh my gosh, thank you. It was happy hands, right? Happy hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and share my screen and, and then just go through this PowerPoint pretty quickly. And so here's my PowerPoint. Oh, I need to change it. Hold on just a minute, share the screen. And what I need to do is, um, Go back over here. Let's go back over here. And I need to switch this to from the beginning. Here we go, here we go. Okay, I just love this photo. And um, this was taken out at my mentor, uh, Herman Pagor's uh, greenhouses when his business was still uh, open. And it was, it was called Shady Oaks uh, Greenhouse or oh, excuse me, Oak Hill, Oak Hill greenhouses. And he's, had, he's retired and, and, and closed his, his, his greenhouses down, which makes me sad, but it, 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 I love seeing these photos. Now the orchid botany, just as a background, there are over 30,000 plus species and varieties of orchids around the world. And they live in almost all climates of the world. They're epiphytic and terrestrial. They're rhizomatous, which means they grow along a monopodial growth habit. Then there's also um, the plant structure where there are leaves um, that, that grow off of pseudo bulbs. See, this is a good example. This is an oncidium where it has a pseudo bulb and the leaves are attached to that. The pseudo bulb stores energy. And, and so that make, that's, that's what makes these orchids so just, just sturdy. Okay, the roots, there may, there may be, there, they, there may be aerial roots on, on the plants. And I thought I had one, you know, showing coming off the stems. And then there are also the roots that come out of the pot when, you know, when the plant needs to be repotted. Okay, all of them photosynthesize. That means they use sun, sunlight and oxygen in the air and what we humans give out. And then they use that and then they create um, carbon dioxide and they release that, excuse me, they take carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So I'm sitting here breathing oxygen, but you wouldn't think that. <laughs> so they use the carbon dioxide that we breathe out and then they use the sunlight with the carbon dioxide to create sugars that get stored in their roots as, as carbohydrates, and then they, they release oxygen. Okay, and then, um, and then let's keep moving here. All right, so this is an example. This shows how these are the epiphytic types. And epiphytic just means they grow up in trees. And these are great photos showing how they're, they're in the crotches of trees where the branches grow out. I love the bottom photo down here where you can see the roots have just kind of spread out and the roots are what attach the plant to um, the branch of the tree. There are also terrestrial orchids. Let's keep moving here. And terrestrial means that they actually grow in the ground. And the best examples of those are the, the lady slipper. Um, uh, um, and we actually have hardy lady slippers. The photo over here on the left, these are hardy lady slippers that grow in our woodland areas. And, um, and then there's also the jewel orchid. That's the photo of the one in the bottom photo. Beautiful burgundy with a white stripe, white stripes on the leaves. And then they bloom with white flowers. These orchids can grow in um, like a well-drained, high organic 
potting soil or potting mix. Um, and whereas the other, the terrestrials, prefer to be in bark fir, you know, bark fir um, or fir bark, fir bark chunks, um, potting mix, and they're much happier than that. You'll find a lot of them that are coming in from the Orient and, and that are sold in larger box stores that are packed in, planted in long fiber sphagnum moss. And that's because it's lighter weight and it, it stays moist longer. So it's easy for people, for companies to ship them in and know that they're not going to get water stressed. But if they're in a, a, a pure moss um, um, environment, it's not healthy for the roots and it, it, they, they don't get enough oxygen. So, so we always encourage people to change those out whenever they have orchids that are like that. Now, the, you know, the orchids are, are my good friend and mentor, Herman Pagores, taught me about orchids and talk and rated them according to um, the ease of care in the home. And so the number one is the Phalaenopsis and number two is the Paphiopedilum, which is the lady slipper. Dendrobiums are, are, are the ones that tend that grow on like, like a, a, a stock that goes up. And, and, and all of these, Oh, and then the oncidiums and the oncidiums. Oncidiums are the ones that have the pseudo bulbs in them. Now, those are the four top ones. The reason they're considered the easiest to care for is that they like the warmer temperatures and warm to a plant is 72 degrees, like what our room temperature is. Now, when you go on down the line, the, ep the epidendrums, the miltonias, miltonias are the pansy orchids, and they're the ones that are so beautiful and everyone falls in love with them, but they are so difficult to get to rebloom in our environment here because they prefer cooler temperatures, much cooler temperatures to get them to go back into bloom. And so let's keep moving on here. Now, the, here's the phalaenopsis. They like to grow warm, 72 degrees. They prefer medium light. Um, they grow under the canopies of the trees, so they're not really in direct sunlight outside. When you can put them in a direct sunny window, they really do well, but you need to watch to make sure they don't get too much sun, um, you know, because they can get sunburn. They prefer a bark mix. They're heavy, heavy feeders, which means you should fertilize them with um, the Dynagro Orchid Pro um, every week when you water. Uh, and then they need to be repotted annually to replace um, the, um, the, the bark. As the bark breaks down, um, it, it's decomposing then it's absorbing the nitrogen, it's absorbing the oxygen, and that's not a healthy environment for um, a plant. Uh, this is a little miniature, and I'll show it closer when we get, when I start. This is a little miniature, one of my own collection, a miniature phalaenopsis, and you can see how um, it's not in moss, but the bark has broken down enough that it needs to be repotted. And when, when, when the roots aren't healthy down in the pot, they'll put those arrow roots out on the top. And that's the plant telling you, I need to be repotted. That's what, that's, they, they, they really do talk to you. Okay, the, the, the Paphiopedilum, or, yeah, this, these are the lady slippers. Um, they like it, there's warm or cool types. Um, the warmer ones are the, um, the ones that have the, 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 the variegated foliage. The cooler season ones are the, um, the, the dark green foliage. Um, they like to be in plastic pots because they like to stay moisture in, in between watering. They need to be repotted and annually. And you don't have to, you don't have to feed these very heavily. That, that, that's one fun thing. Dendrobium phalaenopsis. Now, the reason these are called dendro dendrobium phalaenopsis is the flowers look like a phalaenopsis flower, which is, they also call it a moth orchid, because these flowers look like the way moths look when they land and their wings are open. So, so the flowers look like a phalaenopsis, but you can see these are, you know, have more of a rhizomatous growth and they go up, 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 up. And, and so, you know, they can be divided and cuttings made and, but, and I'll show you that when we get into the, the details. Oncidiums, I love oncidiums. Now oncidiums, their nickname is uh, the, the dancing ladies. You can see the flower. It looks like the large flowers in photo over here on the, on the left, they look like they have a, a skirt that's swirling and then the ladies have their arms out. And it's usually a long, long spray of flowers and, and, and they just look gorgeous. And they look like they're dancing in the wind. 
um, and and just be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Medium to bright light, and they need to be repotted um, at every every two years. And either either plastic or clay is fine for these. Uh, the epidendrum, uh, the epidendrums also have uh, pseudobulbs. Medium to bright light annual repotting or biannual repotting. And um, some of these actually are good for mounting on like, um, like, like, like a tile, um, uh, like a roofing tile and hanging. Um, I'm not as fond of that for in-home enjoyment because when you water those, you dunk them in water, suck them in water for 10 minutes and then let them drain, there always seems to be dripping. And so there's not a lot of places in the home where you're comfortable letting a dripping plaque and wall, you know, bark mounted um, plant drip all over the wall. So, so if you have a greenhouse or a sunroom, they, they're great. They're absolutely great. Okay, here we go. And then I'm just going to show you the Miltoniums, the uh, the Anta and, and 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 these are gorgeous. These are the spider, the spider orchids, the pansy orchids, and but a little more difficult to get to rebloom. And then the Vandas and the and the S. Cassendas are also more difficult, but they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then the Catlias, these are the classic, um, the, the the classic. Um, corsage orchids and, and and people absolutely love these they 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 when they do bloom they're spectacular the flowers are fragrant but they only bloom for about six to eight weeks and then they're done for the year so it's one of those where you really have to love orchids to to be dedicated to the cat liz and they need bright bright light and um, also annual repotting Okay, this is to show you the pseudobulbs on a, on a, a cattleya. Now, um, in the cymbidiums. Oh, we have some gorgeous cymbidiums here. Okay, so now, in order to get them to bloom abundantly, um, you know, you, you have to have the ideal temperatures. So, so, you know, warm is considered 65 minimum or warmer. Intermediate is 58 minimum. And cool is 50, 50 to 55. I have that backwards. 50, 55 to 50. But um, so so the ones that need like the Miltonias, they have to have a, a period where their night temperatures are that cool. And if they don't get that, it won't trigger the bloom. So, okay, here we go. So I just am showing you some of these great, these great photos. And um, and just kind of flipping through. I just realized I pulled up the wrong slide list, but um, this is this shows damage to um, the um, the foliage, and that was what I showed you on the plant that I'm going to divide to show you how to you know how to how to do this. And then in order to get these plants to rebloom, um, you know you, what you have to do. Always look at your light sources. Um, I had someone bring an orchid in just two days ago that was just in beautiful bloom, but the poor thing had not been watered appropriately. And someone had, had given this person the wrong directions about only watering every two weeks. And so this poor thing was, I mean, totally parched. And um, so, but, but I, I realized it had wonderful light because it was still blooming no matter what. So always look at your light levels. North windows just aren't good. Don't even try it if you don't, if you only have light source from the north. Um, you know, east windows are good if you have the light coming in the window and it's not blocked by a, a shading tree or anything like that, because you can get about five to six hours of direct sunlight in the morning. Um, south windows are ideal and you don't want them right next to the window. When, whenever you move a plant six inches, this is six inches from here to here, six inches away from a light source, you reduce the intensity by half. So start about at least a foot away from a window and maybe even further back if you have a south window. West windows are wonderful also. Um, be careful though when it gets hot in the summertime. You don't want it in a hot sunny window. Okay, so now um, um, when you do wanna get these orchids to bloom again, you wanna make sure, and I just realized that I don't think I, uh, I didn't bring the fertilizer. Good job, Jennifer, but um, it's on your list. You always want a fertilizer that has a lower first number than the middle number. All fertilizers have to have the macronutrients listed on the packaging. So it's a three, a three digit number. My favorite is the Dynagro Orchid Pro. It's a liquid and you use one capful, which is a half a teaspoon in a gallon of water. And it has a seven, nine, no, 786 formula. So it has that higher phosphorus, eight is, is higher than the seven. 
so it keeps the plants in bloom. So this is why you want to use a lower nitrogen food or no food at all. I'm not that fond about saying no food at all. You, you always want to have at least that, the high phosphorus. Uh, now, you want to keep them a little more dry uh, in December and going into January. And that, you know, that can help trigger bloom. Um, more space. What that means is if you have a plant that's jammed in the pot, then you need to, you know, divide it so that they have more space and they have, you know, you know more room for their, their roots. Okay, here we go. And then insect control, you're going to use the, um, you know, the, the, um, the, the systemic, my favorite is the systemic insecticide from Bio Advanced, and that's this one right here. And you spray it on the leaves and it stays in, it's, and this, it's on the far left, you, this stays in the leaves for 30 days, 30 days. And any insect that's sucking the juice of the, of the orchid, it also stays in the stem. Uh, of the flowers and any any insects that is sucking the juices will get um, will will be killed in those thirty days, and then this is this is the fertilizing. Here are the fertilizers. There's the Orchid Pro, and then Grow. You can see Grow. If you own Grow, you can use Grow just as easily as the Orchid Pro. It's seven nine five as opposed to seven eight six. Either of those is interchangeable and they're wonderful. And each of them uses a half a teaspoon, which is one of those capfuls in a gallon of water. Easy, easy, easy. And then, um, and, and then if you wanna do a granular, then the best one is the Better Grow brand, Orchid Better Bloom. And you can see it's 11% nitrogen, 35% um, phosphorus. That'll really kick them into flower if, they're, if they haven't been flowering. And then this is how, um, when, when the blooms are finished, and I'm gonna demonstrate you know, with the plant also, but I wanted you to see this on the, the larger screen. When the blooms are finished, if the stems are still green, like in this example, then you follow down and you prune it off um, one third down the length. So you have two thirds left and you prune above a node. And, um, and I'll show you what a node is up close. And 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 then then if if this if the the stock the bloom stock has turned all the way brown all the way down just prune it off because it's not going to come back it's not going to come back okay um, and then and here here are the you have the Phalaenopsis orchid mix and this this is the advanced form because it has some sphagnum moss long fiber sphagnum moss it has the the fur chunk fur bark. It has horticultural charcoal and it has white perlite in it. Um, the special orchid mix is a smaller bag. It has all the three items except for the, the sphagnum moss. And then you can just buy plain fur bark. And the, those are one inch size pieces. And all of those are fine. And, you know, with just a little extra special with like the family mix. These are these are mounted ones. And this was in Herman Pagor's, uh, you know, greenhouse. And you know this, and I'm not going to focus on mounted ones because it, it, that's kind of a specialty area. You can talk to me about that later. Uh, this is the, one of the epidendrons. Uh, I wanted to kind of point out a lot of times you'll get little kikis, little baby orchids. Kiki is the Hawaiian term for baby plant for babies, and you'll get kikis. And instead of having a flower bud, you get these little miniature plants that will form. And you want to leave them on that, that flower spike until you see roots forming. And this has got a real good example of one, two, three, four roots. And the roots are about three to four inches long. That's a prime candidate for you're just going to cut it, cut the bloom spike, uh, cut, cut it. And then all those roots are attached and then plant that. And I'm going to show you how to, how to do the planting. And then I, I showed you, this was a workshop orchid that rebloomed. And then I want to show you, I, I always want to give credit to the person that in, enhanced and encouraged my knowledge and love of orchids, Herman Pagors. And um, he's, he's just a, a great, great man. Because of COVID, we haven't been able to have him here to do a, a, a lecture. I did pick up the phone and we used to always have him in around uh, Valentine's Day weekend so that people could use orchids for Valentine's Day gifts and he would come in and talk about them. I picked up the phone um, this year and, on Valentine's Day and wished him happy Valentine's since we weren't having our our our, our usual you know, uh, you know, Valentine's get together, um, and, which we've done for about 15 years, but that, that, that's Herman. Now what I'm gonna do is um, stop the share 
and then we'll we'll get busy for the um, the hands on. I think I'll t uh, what I'm going to do is I'm look at the the Q and A, and we have 123. Welcome everybody! Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to check the questions and answers real quick. Okay. I bought an orchid yesterday from Chalet and it came in an orchid pot inside another pot uh, that has holes in it. Should I take it out of the outside pot and put it into a pot that doesn't have the holes? No, 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 no. That's a wonderful question, anonymous attendee. Um, you just always want to take the liner out of the holder, the holder that we call that the cash po. And a cash po is a holding pot. You want to take the plant out of that take it to the sink, water with plain water, let it drain, water with plain water, let it drain. And when I mean water, I'm going to move this over so I can see what I'm doing here. Oh, it's not going to do it. Ah. Okay, hold on. I have to do it with the, um, the computer thing. Okay, here we go. All right. So like, this is a good example. See, see how, see how, how low the bark is in, in this, in this container. So if I would set this container in the sink, and fill the water up to here and then stop and so it doesn't go over the sides and just let it drain through and then do it again let it drain through do that twice and then use the fertilizer and let it drain through that's the best way and the best way to manage to manage your you know your your, your orchids great 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 question great question okay so um here we go and um, then the next person is joan can you repot an orchid while it is putting out a flower stock or should you wait until it finishes flowering? Thank you for bringing that up. The answer and it's really loud and loud and loud. No, no, no. Don't ever repot when it's in bloom. And there's logic. There's reason for that. When you repot an orchid, really when you repot any plant, that enables the roots to grow. And if roots can grow or need to grow, or are sick and need to heal, they are like the king of the mountain. They get all of the nutrient and everything. So if you would repot an orchid when it's in bloom, the roots would take over, they would actively grow, and the nutrients that they use are the same nutrients that the flowers use. So if the root's pulling that nutrient away, it will abort the flowers. So if you've got a plant that's in bloom. Here's a cute one I can show you, although it doesn't have, see how, look at this cute guy right here. And this one, because it, it's at the top of the bloom spike, and this is an insider secret, when our orchids get to the top of the bloom and there's no more buds on it, they usually get marked down to 50% off and put back on a, 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 the, you know, a sale table. So, so, but if you, you know, if you would, if you would repot and this would go into a larger, a larger container, then those roots would actively grow and remove and, and abort those flowers. And that's just, that's, that's a sin. I, 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 and so when people would bring orchids to my orchid repotting workshops and they're in bloom, I would never, I would never, never repot. I would never, if they insisted, it was on them. It was on them. So great question. Great question. All right. So um, then, okay, then the next one, another, um, here we go. Another anonymous. Uh, there was something in a slide about trimming double stocks and who and, and who's to cut back that I missed. Ooh, drat, Joan. Um, well, double stocks, double stocks. If you have double stocks, and I don't have an example of a double stock. Well, I do. I do. When you have double stocks, Usually you cut them both down, ah, timber, both down one third and leave two thirds. And if, you know, a lot of times when there's a double stock, one will turn brown and you just cut that one down at the base. And that would be at the base of the plant. So like, oh my goodness, oh, these are tipping over. At the base of the plant, see where this stock is right here? <laughs> I have these balanced and they don't want to balance. This is almost silly. Okay, see how this one comes all the way down. You would cut it off right here, you know, right here above that foliage. All right, and does that help? Does that help? Um, I, I sometimes realize that people pay really good attention and I have to watch out for that. All right, that, that, was, that was great. All right, now, um, 
I have another, will the BioAdvance Insect Control take care of scale? Yes, it will, another anonymous attendee. Um, I removed them with a Q-tip dipped in alcohol, but the scale stays in the soil. Yes, don't bother removing them with a Q-tip. You have better things to do. Spray with that, syst that systemic insecticide. It's in the plant. Scale is an insect that sucks the juices of the plant, and that it will kill them underneath the scale. So, so I, I actually, I should, I should not be answering these because we're we're doing we're doing repotting, dividing, and 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 reblooming. Okay, there was something. Okay, we did that one already. Okay, and there was something on a slide of it. There we go. Done. Okay, this is uh, uh, Linda Hopkins. Can I repot my orchids now, even though it says September? And how do I determine the correct size pot to plant into? I'm going to get to that. All right. And um, and so stay tuned. All right. Um, then, okay. Another one. Oh, they just keep coming. I, I, I broke my rule here. I have had my orchid for over five years and never rebloomed. Is it too late to try to get it to bloom again? This is um, Alon. Alia, Alia. Uh, the reason it's not reblooming is it needs to be repotted. So once you repot it and you fertilize it and give a better light, it will bloom. So good, 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 good question. Okay, uh, will this program be on YouTube? Yes, the program will be on YouTube, Usha. And, um, and okay. And then can you plant an orchid directly in a ceramic porous pot or do you have to have them in a plastic liner? No, if there's drainage holes in a plastic porous, uh, porous pot, yes, you may, you may, you may plant in. But if there's no, um, if there's no uh, drainage, don't do it. Don't do it. You give them a, an 18 month death sentence. Okay, next one. Uh, I have a 24 year old orchid with air roots all over the place. How do I replant? Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you, Shannon. And Angelica S, my insidium are developing some small dark spots. What causes these and there's anything I can do to treat them? Uh, without seeing it, I, I'm not gonna diagnose it. Um, Angelica or Angelica, uh, send me a photo and to my email address. It's jenniferb at shallynursery.com. I'm looking at the time and we need to. Get, I need to get going here. So what does it mean when you lose leaves that turn your yellow brown and fall off? It needs to be repotted. And then can you talk about repotting the babies? I just, I talked about kikis. All right, and I will do, I'll do that more. All right, so I'm gonna put this down, put the, the questions and answers down. I'll get back to them at the end of the, um, of the session. And so for right now, I'm gonna move this back so you can see me actually working on the plant. So we're gonna move, we're gonna shove this back and you can see right here, my work area, right here. So I'm gonna kind of be standing and looking like this. Okay, this is this is the sphagnum moss that, you know, that I like to recommend that you add to the, um, the, the Phalaenopsis orchid mix, okay? And so for one big bag of this, you take a third, a third of a package of, no, a third or a quarter of a package of this. I just pulled a chunk about out of this and I soaked it under the sink and then wring it, I rang it out. So it just felt like a damp sponge. Then I shredded it all up and put it in um, this mix right here. And I'm gonna pull these guys in front of us and put my notes. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to repot this Oncidium because it, it's a really good candidate. And I'm gonna put these guys up in the front here. And then I use I use these kitty litter pans. We sell these at Chalet. These are big kitty litter pans. And I put that whole bag of that Mark mix in. And then I've added the, um, the sphagnum moss. So see the sphagnum moss right here? Okay, and once it's wet, then I stir it in with my hands and it, it nicely um, moistens that bark. So, you know, so it's perfect for repotting, for repotting the orchids. Now, the toughest thing, the toughest thing about, um, you know, working with orchids and repotting orchids is it's hard to tell you exactly what size pot to use that it's going to need. Now, this is a, this is a, you know, a four inch, a four inch container. And you can see how all these aerial roots are coming out because it's time to repot it. So I always save the tag. This is like it's it's um, it's it's um, you know, this this tells you what, what you always save this because you want to know what you know what what the plan is. Now I'm going to move these guys out of the way and put these over here. And 
And then I, I use another, um, I use another tray and I, oh good, it's not gonna block it. I use another tray like right here. And then to show you, you're gonna take the orchid and always, always water them the day before. So I watered these yesterday. So they're nice and moist, they're nice and moist. And so I'm gonna just gently, see how I'm just gently massaging this pot, kind of just squeezing it together. So as a result, I can gently just pull this out. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this one, okay. All right, so you can see how all the roots grew to the edge of the pot and just grew around in circles, circles, circles. And this is why it's always a surprise. So what I'm gonna try to do, and this, it, this might be too heavily rooted. What I'm gonna do, see how I'm opening this up and I'm really, I mean, it, I'm pulling and see, I'm doing this. Because I'm seeing, uh, look, okay, I'm un untangling. So you just gently untangle. You know, see how I'm just teasing it, tickling it. That's the term we always like to use is tickling it. I'm tickling the roots to untangle them. And when there's this many roots, this obviously is a candidate to go with a bigger pot. And so what I'm gonna do is again, I'm tickling, tickling, tickling and untangling this and then see how, look what's in here. This is all sphagnum moss. This is all just plain sphagnum moss. See, and see how I'm just pulling it out. I wanna get that out. And then I'm gonna to try to untangle these as well as I can. These are such tough plants. I love these. So I'm, I'm pulling out all of this, all of this. And the reason the, the roots went to the edge to grow on the edge is that's where they got the oxygen. So, so we're gonna go ahead and keep untangling this Sometimes you gotta be a little tough. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm untangling. And see how I'm opening this up like this? And then look at, oh, this is just all solid. Look, it's all solid sphagnum moss in there. So I'm gonna pull out as much of that as I can. And then I'm gonna replace it with uh, the chunk bark with a little bit of sphagnum. And because it's gonna get more oxygen in the center. And because I want oxygen in the center, um, that this is why that's really important. Okay, so I'm pulling and you can see, I'm gonna show you, you can see there's no, there's no roots up in the center. They all went to the edge where they got oxygen. So again, untangle, untangle. And then I'm gonna take these cute little guys that are right on the edge and, and I'm gonna bring those down because I wanna try those. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get those in the bark mix. Now I'm gonna go up in like another, another inch taller or wider, wider, hold on. A lot of people might not think this is big enough, but it's gonna be just right, especially, no, it's not. I'm gonna go bigger. All right. Okay. See, so when you do this, you can see, you can see it's gonna really, it, it's, it'll really fill out and do well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this mix and put it in the bottom of the pot. Okay. Probably about two inches, about two inches. You know, see, there, there's the edge of the pot. So it's probably up to about here. And then, and then I'll set this right here so you can see a little better. Okay, look, you can see this. And so, and then I'm gonna take some of this bark mix and I'm gonna stick it right up inside that hollow spot where, um, where the, the other bark was. And then I'm gonna set this down Perfect. I'm going to set it down on top. Then that left the top of the root ball and the root mass at, at a half inch to one inch below the top edge of the pot, which is perfect. So I'm going to tuck all of these other aerial roots in right here. And then, and then this is bugging me. See this stem that's right here? That's really bothering me. So I'm going to, well, I, well, before I've got it all tucked in bed, I'm going to just go ahead and trim that off because then it's, it, it was unsightly. Okay, so, so I'm putting this in here. All these roots are tucked in and now I'm just taking the rest and of, of the bark, putting it in along the side and I'm gonna go all the way around and, 
and then firm it in, you know, firm it in with my fingers, you know, all the way around the edges. Oh, this plant's gonna love this. Okay, firming it in, firming it in. Now, this one's a little unusual because there was so, there's the roots, the, the roots were so, so massed tight. I'm gonna show you how to do this with a phalaenopsis, and then I'll show you how to divide, a, you know, an orchid. Oh, I'm right on time, this is good. Okay, so, and then you firm it down. You firm those edges down. You don't want any air spaces. Now, Herman was wonderful. He is wonderful. Whenever he would do repotting, he would firm um, the bark down. So and he was in, he was emphatic about firming it down really tight and really solidly. And whenever he would do it, he would he would pick up the orchid by the leaves and it would pick the whole pot up. And that's how tightly he packed the bark in around the roots. I've only been able to do that two times in my whole 15 years of working with him. I'm always afraid I'm gonna damage the roots and most people are. Okay, so here we go. And a little bit more. What a difference. Look how much happier this plant's gonna be. Now, what I'm gonna do, and th there's there's a difference of opinion. If you've gotten your bark really nicely moist, you don't need to water this plant for one week. And, and, and Herman always said, wait a week and so that the roots can settle in. Whenever we did the workshops here at, at, at Chalet, I was always nervous that people wouldn't learn how to water correctly. So I always encourage people to water it once, once it's like this. So I will be watering this after the, after the workshop, but, and I'm not even gonna attempt, no, it, I'm not gonna attempt it. But look, look, isn't that great? And I just noticed we got all the roots in and, and look, what a happy camper. And then I'm gonna put this one, the tag back on it here. And Herman was always fun. He would always put, um, this is this is the new growth coming this way. So so orchid and showers and, and, and exhibitors always put the tag in the back facing the front so the judge could see what the name of the name of the orchid is. Okay, so there's number one. And then I want to show you, I want to show you with this little miniature phalaenopsis, you know, how to do this. Because phalaenopsis are really, um, you know, th th again, th these are the ones that most people have. And so th this is little, so um, it it's going to be easy to show you. So again, I watered it yesterday and I'm going to pull it out and look at this. You can tell this really needed to be repotted. Oh my goodness. Okay. And I had it growing in a pot that probably wasn't the best. Okay, but I fell in love with these pots and look how all the barks, it was, it's so rotted, it's just falling out. And okay, I love these little pots. They're not the best to use. They have the slits on the sides, but when we got these miniatures, we got these miniatures, I thought, ooh, this is really cute. Well, it wasn't the best, but, and so, and I, this is way overdue. I don't think I've repotted this one for three years. Shame on me. All right, so now look, look at, look, look at all the, and th th this is a good example. When you're dealing with, when you're dealing with um, orchids and like a phalaenopsis, it's one of the few plants that you just knock all of the, the potting mix off the root zone. You take it all off. And, and you don't do that with any other house plants. Never, ever, ever. And then what you're gonna look at is any of them that are really dry. See how dry that one is? This is a good one. See, it's plump. It's, I'll come back in the light. It's plump and, and it's firm, it's firm. Whenever they get brown and, and are, are, are whitened out and thinned out, see, that's a bad one right there. Here, I'm, I'm gonna do this so you can see better. Oh, well, duh, okay, <laughs> look, here we go. I, you know, this is what happens when you do your own production. <laughs> okay, see this? So now this is when you're gonna come in and you're gonna throw all this old bark away and I'm gonna grab my pruning shears, she says, and they're hidden right here. Here are my pruning shears and I'm just gonna come in and prune off all, all the, 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 the the brown and dying ones. So this is coming off, that's coming off. And then you're, I'm just gonna 
throw, I'm going to pitch all this, get rid of it. Now, one of the things I like to always check is look inside right at the base. And you can see this was the original, um, the, the original cutting and it's all rotted. So I'm going to get rid of that. And a lot of times you can just come in and prune the whole segment off, but I'm just going to just take it like this. Wow, this guy, all of these roots rotted inside. And so it's it was living off the aerial roots on this. This is amazing. Okay, now, and see see the flower spikes here? There's an old flower spike. So I'm going to clean that up and get rid of that and then get rid of this one. And I'm going to put this one in. Um, there we go. Oh, there, see, that's a bloom spike right there. So I'm just going to cut that one off. I have to get a cleanup crew in here to clean up after me. You should see how I cook. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to use this size pot. And so now sometimes um, all the energy is stored in, in, in these roots. So sometimes um, I, I was always, I always, I always had to ask Herman whenever he was doing um, a, a demonstration, whether, you know, whether you should cut the lengths of the, uh, of, of the, the, the roots off. Oh, here's a dry one right here. Look at look how dry that one is. See, that's really dry. So I'm going to just prune it off right up underneath where the thick one is. And so, so a lot of times he would cut those off. I'm not going to do that with this one. I'm because I want to show you how to wrap it around. And so, you know, so I test and see how it's going to fit in by just wrapping them all around and getting as many down into the pot as possible. And you're going to think, oh my God, it's packed too full. This is what you want. All right, so now I'm going to put um, fresh mix in the bottom and only about an inch. I just want I just want a place for the those roots to rest. So you can see it's just about oh, it's not even it's about it's about a half inch, three quarters of an inch in the bottom. And then you're going to take this and I'll let's do this. And we'll see what I'm doing. Oh, you can almost see here. Oh, okay, right here. Okay, so I'm taking this and I'm just gonna I'm gonna wrap it all around, kind of twist it in a circle, tuck everything in. This plant is gonna be so much happier. Instead of having to pull high, high humidity out of a very dry air, uh, it's gonna do great. All right, so now I'm taking the bark pieces and just filtering them, dropping them in through those roots. And then I'm taking my finger and just poking in between those roots. It's not unlike the way bonsai masters, they would cringe if they could heard me comparing to them, but how they do, they'll take, they'll take bamboo um, sticks and chopsticks and force the, their potting mix in between the roots of the, the, the bonsai and plants. And that's what we're going to do. I, I want to get it down into the center. Uh, there were so many roots. Normally, I would put a clump of this up underneath the center and wrap it around, but um, this is going to work fine. And then I'm firming, 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 and then tapping it so those pieces go down into it. And then uh, right here, I'm watching the time. Ooh, we're doing great. Okay, and then... And then I'm gonna just firm it. I might be able to do a Herman trick here. He'll love me. He'll love hearing me say this. Okay. All right. So then I'm firming it in. And then and every time I would hear him firm it down, and I mean he would use this like strength to firm it down. And you get all right, done. Okay. And and here, let's see. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So there's that's a, that's the phalaenopsis. Now to, to show you how to do a division, this is going to look scary, you guys. All right. Oh wait, this is the this is the tag for that, and this is a cute. Okay, I'm going to stick this in. Oh, this is one called brown sugar. Oh, isn't that a cute name? I forgot that. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Now I had this one growing in what we call a tom, and this is a this is a ceramic pot, and a tom is twice as long as it is wide. And I like toms because it gives the plants for the roots to get to, to grow large longer. And so I watered this yesterday, so I'm going to have to really tug and pull to get it out. Taking its its pedigree notes here, and and this is a beautiful one called Orange Kiss, 
and okay, I'm gonna set it outside and then just gently kind of massage it out. And sometimes you have to use a knife to cut the edge of the, you know, of the, the you know, the, the, to break the seal between the, the, the pot and the roots because they, they like to stick to it. And I thought I had loosened this up already, but this is a good thing to show you that sometimes you have to wrestle with your plants. Okay, and so here it's coming out now. Okay. Oh, look at this. Whoa, look at that. Can you tell this one? And then I'm going to hold this over the work bench here. And then look how all of those roots grew right up next to the, the terracotta because they 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 breathe, you know, and so more more oxygen goes through that. So as I'm untangling, here I'll do this so you can't see the leaves aren't in the way. As I'm untangling this. You know, this is kind of the way you do divide and also repot at the same time. So I'm knocking. Oh, see how that I'm, I'm getting in underneath here and knocking all that bark out. And a lot of it is real mushy. It's real mushy. I don't think it's been. I thought I repotted this just a year ago. But anyway, so so see, I'm untangling all these and then knocking all that bark off. And it really is like wrestling, everybody. Okay, so here we go. Okay, I'm watching. Okay, so I've got, I've untangled all of this. And so when you wanna divide, okay, you look at, you look at the plant and you'll see the big, the big pseudobulbs are usually in the center. They're usually in the center of the plant. So right here, see this big pseudobulb right there? See the, that pseudobulb right there? That's in the center, and then shoots grew out from either direction on this. So here's a new shoot right here. See this new shoot that's right here? Gosh, that's hard to see. Okay, there's the new shoot coming this way. See how young these are? So when you divide, you wanna have at least three segments, eat three pseudobulbs. So what I'm looking at is each direction that this plant grew away from the, the main pseudobulb, and you just, you just, you're just gonna, instead of using a knife, just gently break them apart. So I'm just taking one clump from this side over here and one clump from this side over here, and I'm gonna gently pull them apart. And here, you can hear them kind of cracking. It sounds bad, but it's but that's what you want it to, to happen. And I'm just pulling, the, uh, untangling the roots over on this one side, and then just pulling this right apart. Now, if it's not gonna break apart, then, then I'm gonna use the pruning shears, but I, I try to pull first. There we go. And this one has one, two, three, four, almost five little, little pseudobulbs. So I'm gonna pull this apart like this and see it twisting, twisting, twisting. And this is where I'm gonna get the pruning shears now. All right, and see how I've got this separated from the, the, the main pseudobulb? And these grew this way, and then this other one grew that way. So I'm gonna just, and I'm twisting it and twisting it. And you can hear it snapping. Oh God, it sounds all, all awful, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna get the pruning shears. Okay, and I'm just gonna come in right here and just cut it right here. All right, one snip, and it's just gonna pull apart. Hear it? I know if you can hear the cracking. The ripping and tearing. This almost sounds awful, doesn't it? Okay, there it goes. And then and then I'm cutting less roots this way because I'm just untangling them and pulling them apart. And see, see how that worked? So look, there is a great. There was, this would be the big, the big pseudobulb right here. And this grew next to the edge of the pot. So it was all crinkling up. See how it's all crinkling up? So I'm gonna give this its own separate pot. 
and then and then we're gonna uh, it'll be repotted like we did the other ones you know so so I, i'm i'm looking at the time and i wanted to just show you how to divide it and then you'll use the same repotting technique that i showed you with the first one putting the soil on the bottom and then firming the soil around it now i want to focus on i want to focus on, on helping them to rebloom. So, so if they haven't, you know, if they haven't bloomed for several years, what you want to do is check and check the amount of light that you have you have for them, and then make sure make sure that you're um, that you're giving it fertilizer, and you know, do it weekly. Do it weekly. And um, again, my favorite recommendation is the Dynagro Orchid Pro because it has 11 micronutrients that go with it. So they work synergistically to give the best, you know, the best growth. Um, if you're going to prune a back of a blooming stock, and I left this one on, this one, this one fell off a bench and looks terrible. So see how it was kind of falling away. This is a dendrobium. And, and see the bloom spike up here? Okay, we were leaving it to let people know what color it was, and then um, see the see the the brown bloom spike right here. You would just come back and prune this off right uh, right here, right right above that node. You could also cut this one off and this one off, and I'm going to show you that. See the area? Oh, this is awful. Okay, see the aerial root right here. There's an aerial root right here. So you could just, I'm gonna cut in between those two nodes. This is one of those bamboo stakes. See, I, I just cut in between that node. I'm gonna stick this back in here. This is a good candidate for repotting. I'm gonna do this at the live demonstration tomorrow. So, so but, but I took some of the weight off of this. And then this is a great candidate for repotting in a small pot. So that little tiny pot that I took the other one out of, where is it? I can't find it. Don't you hate that when that happens? But, and then I would repot that in this. And you can see how these leaves, these leaves are really dry because it was up high on the plant with a real tiny root system and it needed to be repotted before it came to us. And so, so once I get this repotted and what I might do with this one, because it has the aerial root, I'll pot it in that small pot now and, and let it grow on for um, possibly a full year, but maybe only six months. Let those roots develop, and then aerial roots will probably form off of this one too, and then cut this one back off. But you could leave this in a small pot, like like the one we just took took the plants out of. And I'm, I'm sure. Oh, here it is. It's buried in here. Yeah, we could just. Uh, this would even be too big. This would be too big for this, but um, you know, it, I, I would go with even a, a, a narrower, you know, one than that, and, and stick that and in there. And um, but but um, back to the reblooming. Okay, at least five hours of sunlight, direct sunlight, whether it's east, south, or west, on the leaves of the plant will generate that. Now, there are also, um, most of the orchids are what we call short day triggered, which means that when the days get short, um, which is, excuse me, when the days get long at the, in, in the summer, like in July, the longest day of the year is, 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 is June 21st. Then at that point, the days start getting shorter and shorter and shorter, and then the nights are longer. And that period, that 10 week of the declining day length is what triggers the orchids to go back into bloom. And then they'll go into bloom in December, January, February. That's why all the orchids look so great in January and February right now, this time of year. So many of them, if you keep them in bright enough light, a good quality bright light, and you fertilize regularly, many of them can stay in bloom, like the dendrobiums and the and the and the and the and, and the um the the and the moth orchids, they can stay in bloom for six to maybe even nine months. And so then so but when they stop blooming, that's when it's time to re, re, repot them. So usually July, August, September is the right time to repot, you know, repot you repot the orchids. So so I think, okay, I've got five minutes. What I want to do is I'm gonna go back to the QA. Here we go, QA. All right, let me pull this forward so I can get to these. You guys have been great. 
Okay, and we still have 112 people. You are wonderful. Okay, I'm a 24 year old orchid. Okay, so Shannon, I'm hoping with you watching that you realize you could repot. You know your you know your 24 year old orchid and be amazed at how much better it does. Okay, don't don't hesitate. All right, and then okay, this is my orchids doing some small dark. Oh, Angelica, send me send me that email, Jennifer B at shallynursery.com, just with a photo, and I can tell you what's going on. Okay, um, Jim, can you talk about repotting the babies? Oh, well, the, the kikis, the kikis. If a if a small plant starts it is produced at, at you know on the flower spike in, in where where a flower used to be, then wait till the kikis form at least three roots. And then after the three roots are formed, then you cut the flower spike and you're going to cut, you know, cut it a half inch below the kiki and then cut the rest of the spike a half inch, uh, you know, ab above the kiki and then repot just like you repotted the other ones where you have the roots down in, in the bark. Okay. Um, all right. Here we go. All right. Um, all right. Natina, what does it mean when leaves turn yellow or brown? God, I'm sweating, you guys. Isn't this funny? Wrestling with orchids. Um, when the leaves turn yellow or brown, that means that, number one, they either don't have healthy roots, they're not getting enough light, or they're not getting enough fertilizer. And so number one is to, is to get them repotted so that you get you have a good watering and make sure they're not in just straight sphagnum moss. That, that was a great question. Okay, now, uh, Jim, uh, can you talk about repotting the babies? Oh, I just did that. Okay, answer live. Um, and let me see. This is Jim Naughton. How often should a healthy orchid bloom? Oh, every year, every year. If you give it the right amount of light and the right temperatures, um, every year it should bloom. Good question. Okay, uh, Tanya Haskett, can you group them together and put them in a large wide pot or dish? Um, that's a tricky question. Uh, you can group them together. I would leave them in their individual pots and then put them all in like a large container that it has got chunk bark in it. But each each plant should have its roots contained in its own. If you try to put it in a great big one, it's too much. It's too much, and the roots will over you know over them. So you know, group them in their own pots in the, in the display. You know, the display uh, container, and and then make sure you water each each plant individually so that, that it's getting nice and nice and hydrated. That was a good question. Um, okay, um, let's do this. Okay, uh, Katie R, uh, do you ever cut roots off? The only time you cut roots off is if they're brown, flat, at, or black and flat and, and rotted. No, you never cut roots off. That was a good question. That was a good question. Okay, done. And here's Jim. Uh, and do you trim? Do you do you trim the dead, dry roots? Yes, you do. Anything that's dry and flat and and or, or mushy, you prune those off. Okay. And usually you don't see those until you get the plant out of its pot. Susan Moynihan, my orchid bark always seems dry. When I lift them, they come right out of the bark. I water once a week. Um, Susan, that's because you haven't packed the bark tightly enough around the roots when you've repotted. You need to really, and you might want to add um, a little bit of the the the, the long fiber sphagnum because that helps that helps hold the moisture um, around them better. So so that that was a good question, excellent question. These are great questions, everybody. Okay, now Usha, uh, why did you put very little bark in the bottom of this? Because there wasn't room. The question is, why did you put very little bark in the bottom of 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 this one? I, I believe it was this one right here. Because the roots were the roots were so full that I only I only put a half inch, and then because the roots filled up the top the top. So so you just don't want to have so much bark in the bottom, so that when you put the roots in, um, they're 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 up out of the out of the top of the pot. Okay, good good question. These are all great questions. Okay, can you um, explain? about the wrinkled leaves on the plant you showed at the beginning of the program. Yeah, what happened is that plant was getting too dry in between waterings. And when I took it out of the, out of the pot, I could see that the roots had all grown to the edge and it was a terracotta pot. And, you know, and, and, and so it was drying out in between waterings too much. And then as the new leaves are forming, they don't have enough water and they crinkle up because they don't have enough water pressure to expand the leaf. 
And that's what causes that, that's what causes that accordion, that accordion look. Good question. Good question. Okay. Um, repeat. Can I repot my orchids now, even though your slide said September? Linda, I am not sure which side said, said September. So if, you're, if your orchid hasn't been repotted in one to two years and it's not in bloom, yes, you can repot now. Yeah, and I'll go check my slide and make sure why that's confusing. Okay, good, good question. Thanks for repeating it. Um, is this is this taped to view later? Yes, it is. Um, it, it's going to be on our Chalet YouTube page, and you just go to U YouTube, type in Chalet webinars, and all of them will, will come up that are you know that we have available. Okay, and then Helen Jacobson, um, my orchid has been. Losing leaves dramatically and now only has one leaf left. Is there any hope? Yes. As long as there's anything green on it, you can. there's always hope. And Herman taught me that. So get it repotted in fresh bark mix as soon as you can, and you'll be amazed. And then use a good fertilizer, get it some good light, and you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. Good, good questions. Okay. And then anonymous attendee, if you just cut a tall, wait. If you just cut a tall one under the flower, don't they just get taller and taller? Hmm. I'm going to ask anonymous attendee that asked that to send me an email at jenniferb at shallynursery.com because I don't exactly understand what you're asking. And if you have an example you can take a photo of, send that to me. Okay. Uh, another, are you saying we should not repot now and wait until September? This is the same person. No, 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 no. If you haven't repotted for several years and, uh, and there's no flower stock and, you know, we, we repot it now, repot it now. There's no bloom, repot it now. Okay. Then uh, what does it mean when an orchid sweats? Well, when an orchid sweats, um, well, okay. That can mean it was just it was just watered, and the temperature dropped in the room, and it's called gutation. And so the water oozes out of the cells and, and collects at the tips of the of the leaves. If you're talking about stickiness that's underneath the plant, that means that it has an insect, usually scale, and 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 that's the excrement. And we we politely call that honeydew. So I'm not exactly sure what sweat means. You can send me an email, Jennifer B at shallynursery.com. Um, then here's here's Linda. Uh, Linda, let me go in here. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Uh, please confirm uh, you should wait to be pot orchids in midsummer in preparation for growing, do you fertilize all year long? Fertilize all year long, yes. Um, if your orchid has not been repotted in one to two years and it's not in bloom now, you can go ahead and repot it now. And it's a, it's a great rejuvenation thing. Okay, that's Linda. Um, Phil, okay. What is proper watering technique? Ah, oh, great question. Okay, so you're gonna take um, the plant in the pot, well, I'll use this as a good example, the one I just re repotted the first. Take this to the sink and then see how the, there's an inch of space from the, the top edge of the pot to where the bark is, right, you know, right here. I um, would sit in the sink and then I would fill it up with water till the water is at the top here, stop, and then let it drain. And then do that again, fill it up and then let it drain. And then take two to three cups of the fertilizer mix and, 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 and water it through the whole bark. Great, great questions, great questions. Okay, um, done. Um, Dixie Downs, can I use fertilizer spikes? I don't like fertilizer spikes. The reason I don't like fertilizer spikes, especially for orchids, is um, in bark, they don't, they don't disperse like they should. And then what happens is if, if the, the plant does get too dry in between waterings, um, then um, there's, and then you do water, you get this very highly concentrated area of, of uh, fertilizer, which can be a salt and it can damage the roots. I, I hate spikes, I hate spikes, I, I, I hate spikes. I'm gonna say that again, I, I, I do not like spikes. Okay, then this is uh, Linda, um, okay, let's do this. Um, here we go, oh goodness, okay. Plastic or clay? Okay, Phalaenopsis, 
um, because um, they don't in our dry dry households uh, work great in 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 plastic um, and but really you know as long as you understand you know your watering technique and if you have it and if you have it in a clay pot, make sure you, you get the clay nice and wet when you're watering the plant. And then it helps hold moisture that way. So, so you know, so, but, but it can dry out if you have dry air, if you have dry air. Okay, um, I heard that you should use ice cubes. Oh my God, I didn't even talk about ice cubes. No, no, no. There's a big company, they're mostly florists out of Ohio. They've made multi-millions of dollars called the ice orchids. And it's usually for florists that are planting an arrangement where there's no drainage. And, and, and it's okay to use an ice cube. It's not okay. They use ice cubes because they melt slowly. It doesn't run all the way and build up water in the bottom of, 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 the, of the decorative container. But when I have done workshops and, and the repotting workshops, I can always tell which orchids are being watered with ice cubes because you get a freezer burn on the top of the on top of the roots. So I don't agree with with ice cube watering unless you've got this you know this arrangement and it's in a beautiful container with no drainage and it's sitting on top of a fifty thousand dollar mahogany table. So I, I don't, you know, and when I, when I, when I first talked to Herman about ice cubes, he's German and he was, he was flabbergasted. He, he said, he, he thought that it was poppycock and I think it's poppycock too, but can okay, you ever prune off lower leaves that are soft or wrinkled? Joan, yes, you can prune off lower leaves that are soft or wrinkled, but I usually don't do that until I try to get everything rehydrated because there's a good chance that they will rehydrate depending on the variety. Okay. Okay, then here's, uh, you guys, you guys have such great questions. Okay, here's Jim again. Is there a specific pot you prefer? Um, no, N no, there's not a specific. Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. I love these pots. I, I love these, um, I love these pots. And this is from, God, I can't think of the name of them. They're, um, it's an Italian company and they're called Euro, Euro pots. And they're decorative and see the decorative and they have great saucers and they have excellent drainage. So I love these, I, I love these. And you know, and we have them in all different sizes. So, so yeah, I do have a favorite pot. <laughs> it's funny, funny you should ask. Okay, um, and uh, what do you think about ice cubes for watering? I just talked about that. I hope you heard me saying that uh, ice cubes are just ridiculous. I, I hate ice cubes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, does what well, type of pot matter? Meaning classes for terracotta is one better than the other for orchids. Okay, I just talked about that. And um, um, again, um, um, some orchids like to be moister. So plastic is good because they don't dry out as, as, as quickly in between waterings. Okay, Megan D, what causes my areas to corkscrew on my phalaenopsis? Do you have, you have been off it. Awesome. Oh, thank you. What a nice compliment. Uh, well, what causes them to corkscrew is if they're, you know, they're, they're up and growing in the air and, um, and, and they get too dry. They'll, they'll curl up, you know, they'll curl up. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about the corkscrew outside when they're inside and they're growing in circles. That's just because they get to the edge of a pot and, and circle and circle and circle. Okay, um, Karen, um, and I just noticed, oh, we're I'm like eight, eight minutes over, but I'm going to keep answering the questions if you all are still here. Um, okay, how often should the orchids be watered? Once a week. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. You want to water your orchids once a week. And not more, you know, once a week and let them, you know, let them get dry in between waterings. A lot of times what kills orchids is people water too much and or too frequently. Overwatering is when you water too frequently. And you and, 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 and you know, if you go once a week and water drain, water drain, and everyone is horrified. They said, Isn't that too much water? No, no, no. Water and drain because you're hydrating everything. You're hydrating the bark, you're hydrating the roots, and then you let it dry out. And when it dries out, it brings oxygen down to the roots. And that's what makes healthy roots and healthy plants. Okay, good question. Uh, should you go to a lower node? Uh, when you're when when I don't understand that one. And that's another anonymous person. Um, a, no, a lower node, um, I don't understand that one. Email Jennifer Brennan at shallynurser.com. Uh, this has been so informative. Thank you, Sue Stock. Thank you. Okay, shall we wipe our leaves? 
with anything in particular, just a damp cloth, just a damp cloth. I hate, I hate leaf shine. Don't use leaf shine. Leaf shine actually clog it, clogs the, um, will, will clog the, um, the, the stomates. So just a damp cloth. Good question. Um, so, so we water from above. Why are there holes in the bottom of the orchid pots? Yes, you water from above. There are holes in the bottom to drain. Okay, that's a great question. You, you never, you never want to sit it in water and let it soak up. Uh, let, let me, let me, let me clarify that. If something has gotten totally bone dry, uh, and that, and it, it's in a sphagnum moss. Sometimes you need to let it sit in a sink of water or a tray of water for 15 to 20 minutes to help soak up the water. But that's not a good practice to get into. So, um, okay, that's, that's a great question. Okay, uh, Karen Donovan, uh, is it a good idea to put an orchid in a pot with holes in it? Is it a good idea to pot? An orchid in a pot with them. Yes, it's absolutely mandatory to, to plant an orchid with, 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 in a pot with holes in it. You should always have drainage, always. Number one horticultural rule, drainage, unless it's an aquatic garden, okay? Great, 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 okay. Um, then, okay, here we go. Uh, is misting beneficial? Uh, Meg and Dee, um, no. The only thing misting is good for is the human. It it, 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 it it clears your conscience. And then it just water spots the leaves because our water is so highly mineralized and it only lasts for 20 seconds. So don't bother, don't bother. If you wanna raise, increase the humidity around your orchids, uh, get a you know get a humidity tray, so you know it's, it has a stand in it, and and or you can get a down under plant stand, put it in a saucer, a deeper saucer, and then have, let the water sit in the saucer where the bottom of the pot is not sitting in the water. Great great question, yeah misting what a waste what a waste. Okay, um, okay I did that one. Uh, next one how how do you rehydrate when the leaves are are dry? watering, you know, water and water, let it drain, water, let it drain. A lot of times you might need to repot it to give the, the roots a healthier environment so they can actually take up the water. So, you know, so, you know, water it first, then repot it and then, you know, you know, moisten the, the bark and then, you know, after a week and it may take, it may take two full weeks before those roots are able to absorb and, and, and really hydrate those, those wrinkled leaves again, but it always works. And then use the fertilizer. That really helps them to get healthier. Okay, um, and then I think I answered this one. Um, okay, this was about humidity again. Uh, do orchids like humidity? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, what I like to do is group all my plants together in the, uh, in the same room, and where that increases the humidity naturally as the plants are transpiring. And then I also like to use a little cool mist uh, humidifier in the room. And that really makes a huge difference, especially this time of year when our furnaces have been going nonstop. And people always say to me, well, I have a humidifier on my furnace, so I don't need it. Yes, you do. Humidifiers on furnaces, just take it up to 12 to maybe 15%. And, um, you know, so you just get a separate, you know, room, you know, room humidifier, um, you know, and, and it makes a huge difference on, on all your plants. All of them love that. Okay, then here's another one. Thank you for this. Um, no, this is Renee Bejek. Thank you for your presentation. This was wonderful and so needed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, here's another um, another one about holes in the bottom of the pot. A pot that has holes all over the pot, not just holes in the bottom. Oh, okay, Kathy Donovan, no. The, the, those pots that have holes on the sides, those are okay if you live in Thailand or Florida where the humidity is 80% all year long. They're really bad for, um, for, the, for the orchids here in our environment. And I know we sell them, darn it. We sell them and everyone thinks, oh, this is what I did. If you're gonna use those, they're beautiful, but you know, use another plastic pot, plant the orchid in a plastic pot and just set them inside those decorative containers. Um, but those are good, again, if you live in Florida or you live in Thailand or Hawaii, you know, so, okay. And then um, here we go, Patrick, uh, how do you really feel about using fertilizer spikes? <laughs> I wasn't completely clear to me. Just kidding. Great job with the presentation. <laughs> I love people like you, Patrick. That's great. Uh, you, did you talk to my husband? And my husband would say something like that to me. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, and this is Shane. 
Uh, Talbot, hi Jennifer. Hi Jennifer, hi Jennifer. Hi Jennifer, always love seeing you. Thank you so much for all the valuable information. Thank you so much. Uh, very good. And I think, uh, uh, let me see, I've got a couple of chats in the chat box. Uh, thank you for all the great information. Thank you so much. Uh, always love seeing you. Oh, you guys are so great. Thank you. And let me go to the chat box. Uh, will this program be on YouTube? Yes, it will. Usha, oh, Usha, you did both. Okay, thank you for the presentation. This is wonderful, so needed. How do you feel about spikes? Okay, when blooming sprouts start to show, at what point can you try to direct them upward rather than outward? Ooh, oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. What you wanna do is turn them towards the light. And then once you get, I usually don't try to force them until I get at least six inches of growth. On them and then then you can try to, to try to direct them up that's a great question uh kevin rooney that's a great question okay is it okay to put an orchid in a pot with lots of holes in it oh we i did that on the other one thank you uh helen jacobson thank you this was awesome thank you thank you oh you guys are so great thank you thank you thank you all right i went way over i kept you all after class and uh, there's still 72 of you here Mwah. I love you, love you, love you. And, um, and, and, you know, come in and see us, uh, come in and see the orchids. Oh my God. The orchids are phenomenal. They're phenomenal. And, um, we're getting great, great supplies and, um, come in and take advantage of 20% off. It is a cool deal. So, um, so I love y'all and, you know, miss seeing you in, in the learning center. But I'm so thankful that you're coming to our virtual webinars, and uh, and and thank you for dealing with my uh, my techno learning, and you know and I I can actually stop saying techno difficulties. I can say techno learning because I'm learning. I'm learning. So okay, and then okay, uh, I think all right, we're good. We're good. I'm gonna go ahead and end it. So uh, thank you all. Mwah.